Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nerd Time with Alec. We are here. It is now. This is happening. Blank screen. What's the deal? Well, if you pay attention to drive time, which none of you do, but I'm sure some of you may, you will know that I promised to record a StarCraft II shoutcast commentary. And what that means is I'm going to go ahead and commentate a game I played online against another human being. <gasps> StarCraft II Ultimate Game Online. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is this game, Alec, and why do you play it? Well, you do know that if you watch this, I'm a huge, huge nerd. And I embrace that. And today was the CrossFit uh, Games finale of the regionals. And uh, I was there, and it was a very, very fun day. And so now I decided, well, I did something super athletic. Why not do something super nerdy? So here's the StarCraft II logo. Whoosh, that's nerdy enough for you, isn't it? But what is StarCraft II, you're asking? Well, besides burning flames of awesomeness, it is a real-time strategy-based game. Wow, that sounds really cool. What does that mean? That means it is probably on the hierarchy of nerd games right up there at the top with Dungeons and Dragons. What do you mean? Well, what you do is you build and control an army. Okay, sounds cool. I'm with you. But what does that mean? Well, you defeat an opposing player. You normally, if you're man enough, step up and play somebody, normally a small South Korean, who will go ahead and make you feel like a little tiny girl on the computer. But sometimes you do defeat the opposing player you gain victory, you gain honor, flaming awesomeness occurs, and wait for it, there it comes. You become Leet or 1337. That's Leet in Super Leet Code. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I start showing you the actual game I played is explain this game to you as quickly as possible. So go ahead and just skip ahead about 30 seconds or follow along. Here we go. There are three races in StarCraft II battling it out inside the universe. The first race we're going to go for is called the Protoss. There's their home base. Home base for the Protoss. They are a psionic race, which basically means they're telepaths and all-around badasses, and they're imbalanced, so anyone that plays them automatically wins. That's race number one. Race number two, Terrans, human beings, somehow still survive. Surprisingly, haven't killed ourselves yet. And there we are, and that's our home base, the Command Center. And the third race, my favorite race, the Slimy, the Insecticides, the Zerg. They are gross and awesome. And so basically, the whole game is this. These bases create these probes. There's the probe for the Protoss. There's the SCV. There's a little human inside there walking around with a drill and a grill bit and trying to figure it out. And here's the Zerg. Oh, little tiny creature. And these guys go around and they harvest minerals and Vespian gas. That's right. There are only two resources in the future, and they are minerals and gas. So what you do is you start with a little base. You get your little critters, your little SCVs or drones or little whatever you got. You send them out there to mine gas and minerals. And from that gas and minerals, you can create objects. Now, before you can create an army, you got to create some structures. So for Protoss, you have to make this little tiny crystal. For humans, you have to create a supply depot because you need food and all that good stuff in there. And for Zerg, you have to create an overlord, a big floppy floating balloon that flies around and does nothing. But once you create one of these, you now have the ability to create 10 fighting units. Oh my god, you're still with me. I'm starting to lose some of you, I can tell right now. 10 units for the Protoss. Whoosh! The Zealot, he has psionic blades, he goes around and cuts people up with those things. He's very aggressive and has no mouth. It's kind of weird. For the, for the Terran, yay, a floppy marine. They run around and look cool and they, have, they look like little bugs and they pew pew things with their little rifles and don't do anything. And for the Zerg, you get these little Zergling insect crazy floppy things that cut you up and have spikes and are really gross. <sighs> but you don't just get these three units. No, no, that would be very boring. I would, it'd be very boring just to create these and send them after each other. In fact, you get giant unit chains. Oh my god, I'm being overwhelmed with nerdiness. Right now, you should be probably, your head should probably be exploding because this is crazy. On the Protoss, you can see you can build pylons, assimilators, forges, all these different things, and you can build different units. Terran, same thing. Zerg, same thing. Now, here's the deal. All these units, all of these units counterbalance each other. They fight in different ways. You have to know what units to use, what's your opponent doing, what's going on, oh my god. And epicness ensues. So I played two games. I played against a fellow uh, United States American, Matt White, who took me on. He, uh, he requested the fight, and I said, no problem, I will take you down. He happens to be an extremely good player compared to my level. So, I won't bore you anymore. Let's jump into the two games I played against him, and I'll show you how epicness ensued and show you how what happens. What's going to happen, guys? Is Alec going to win? Is he going to take the game? Or is Matt going to dominate? Good question. Let's play StarCraft 2. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to load up the first game here. Boom. Here we go. This was an exciting first match between me and June Zerg, also known as Matt White. Whew, I was nervous what was going to happen. 
how is this going to go down? Well, I normally play the Zerg race. I love the insects. They are my favorite. So today I decided to first game, you know what, let's see how good he really is. Let's mix this up. Let's go right for the Protoss. That's right, I was going to take on that Zionic, Sionic race and see what could go down. So here's me, Bojangles, living it. Look at this, sending those probes out, sending them out to mine. That's how I do stuff. See, they're getting their minerals over here. See this mini map? Follow my mouse. Follow it. That's me talking. Ignore me talking. Follow the map. Boom. June Zerg. Matt. Going for it. Sending his little drones out. Mining. See the up here, guys? The mineral count. This is the minerals. Everyone's bored right now, so that's fantastic. But look, he's so lucky. He sends his floppy floating balloon over to my base on the first one. He's going to scout me out. This is lame, but he's figuring it out. So he's right now, he's mining. He's mining away. Why? Why is he mining so much? Because he wants to get enough minerals to create some structures. Remember the whole intro video? Were you there? Did you pay attention? Bojangles, Alec Hansen, off to a great start. This probe's doing nothing. Sitting there literally, oh, fi finally, creates a pylon. See that warping in from outer space? That's what the Protoss do. We warp stuff in from outer space. I'm turning the volume down because it's getting a little aggressive. Oh, and here he comes, the floppy, floppy balloon. Sees everything that's going on here. Darn it! So he knows what's going on in my base right now. He knows exactly what's happening. He can see everything. This is not good. Let's go to his view. That's my view. That does nothing. Here's his view. Oh, this is his camera view too. This is what his camera's doing. He's seeing everything. He's like, what's this guy doing? Nothing. Checking me out. Checking himself out. Here's Bo Jangles. Oh, but what's this? On the minimap. What is that? Oh my god. Oh, I sent out a little probe. I sent out a probe to scout him. This could be big. Oh, what am I doing? What's going on here? What am I doing? I'm being crazy right now. I'm coming down here and putting a pylon down here by the gold minerals. That is weird. What is that? Back to the Zerg. Spawning pool coming up. This is the first base required. This is the first structure required for the Zerg to be able to create fighting units. Okay, he needs this. He's desperately building this right now. He's already got his gas up. He's mining gas. See this? Wow. He is so much better than me. What am I doing over at my base? Nothing. Oh, I'm, for, I'm bringing in a forge. First structure for Bo Jangles, like a champion. Well, you know what the forge is. If you see a Protoss going forge first, you know exactly what this means. The cheese is coming. That means I'm trying to win by actually not playing competently, but by cheesing. So I'm sneaking this probe up here, trying to stay hidden. But he doesn't see me. He doesn't see me. Sneaking him in. Sneaking him in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he sees me. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm trying to build some cannons in his base, but it's not going to work. He totally found me with his little stupid Zerg critter thing. Oh, and they all come. Oh, God, they're all coming. Run, Probe! No, Probe didn't make it, and now he's killing my thing. Go, don't kill it. Cancel it. Don't let it build, and you let it build. You are the worst, Bojangles. Now he sends his little Zerglings over. He's poking away at it. Up here, he's got this guy checking out my base. He's like, this guy is actually building nothing. Alec is actually built. Oh, look, I'm going to put a cannon in. Thank God. First thing. Go back to work, drone. Do something. Don't just sit there. You're going to sit there. God, you suck. Back here, June Zerg, the competent player, is building an expansion so he can mine from these minerals and he can mine from these minerals. Wow, he's far ahead. He's got a queen on the field. Don't worry if you don't know what these units do, but basically this queen is badass. It's creating a little extra larva. These larva are what the Zerg uses to create. Oh, see, look at that. He's hatching out three cocoons of life and bringing in some units. So up here, pylon still exists getting ripped down by these zerglings. So basically I went ahead and built five more things now because I don't know what I'm doing. These buildings are going to eventually be able to create units, but will it be done in time? Will my units pop out in time to handle what I can only assume is my incoming death from all these units that June Zerg is creating? Uh-oh, what's this? Oh, a roach warden. So now he's creating another structure to create even more powerful creatures than he already has. Here comes the onslaught probe running away, trying to do nothing. Gonna get killed really easily. I mean like super easily. Yep, gonna kill him. Oh look, I gave away my little secret over here. He found my secret pylon and he died and now he's gonna die. So let's look back at my base. What's going on? The structures have just arrived that can build units. They've just finally come up that can build units. My mining, look, I have no gas. Do you see gas being mined? Nope, you don't, do you? Do you see 600 units, 600 uh, minerals right here? That means I'm not spending any minerals. That means I'm just keeping them. Because who needs to spend them on units? You don't need to defend this Protoss. 
Protoss just need to exist in all their awesomeness, and they defeat everybody. But look at this. The Zerg's, Zerglings are coming up. They're pushing in. Pushing in. This is bad. I have no units. I have no units. I use a special spell called something on my Chrono Boost on my buildings trying to get units out. He's up in my probe line. This is bad. Look, I got four Zealots. Go, Zealots. Get up there. Kill the Zerglings. Where are you going? What are you doing? Bojangles, you are the worst player ever. God, these Zerglings are killing all my probes. I'm trying to fight back. Fight back, probes. Fight back. Fight back. God, he's killing all my harvesting units. As you can probably tell, if you lose all of your units that harvest minerals and you can no longer harvest minerals, the game's over pretty fast. Now, I do have 600 minerals still stockpiled because I'm just badass. But look at this. Counterattack. Counterattack. But he's ready. Gosh darn it. He's got, he's got roaches on the field. He's queens hacking and running away. My, Zer my zealots are running around. They're super slow. Get there. Get there. Get there. Kill him. Kill him. Now he's building static defenses. The Zerglings rush back. Another queen comes down. Zealots have no chance. Run away. Run away. Acid is being spit on them by the roaches. These dirty, slimy, spitting roaches are spitting acid. Spitty spit spit. Back at my base, nothing's happening. Fantastic. Back here, all the zealots are dying. All the zealots are just running to their death. Running to their godforsaken death. He's going to run away. This guy. Go. Go. Ten life. Ten life left. Run for your life. Be a baller. Get back to home base. Turn around. Kill the roaches. That's the plan. Back at home base. Nothing's being built. I am the worst player of all time. Nothing's happening at all. And I'm just going to be honest right now. I thought I would cannon rush him and win. That's that's the game. I really don't know how to play Protoss. I have no idea how to play this race. I just thought I could... Oh, don't spit acid. Don't kill him. I just thought I could literally cannon rush him and win. And not only... Oh, four more zealots. Oh, turning the tide of battle. Run in there, zealots. No. Okay, run away. That's good. No, don't don't kill the roaches. Just sit here. In fact, just sit and do nothing. Oh, look, I'm not building any other units. Wow. Here's the production tab. Look, it can show that I'm not doing anything at all. Well, these roaches are just a night. Oh, I got four zealots on the way. Thank God. Bring them in. Four zealots. I'm chrono boosting a forge with nothing going on there. If you play StarCraft, that's pathetic. Oh, I lost a building. I am lost a probe. Oh, this is looking bad. But Alec's going to rally. Alec is a rallier. He likes it late game. That's why it's my style. Oh, no, nope. I say GG, which means good game. He says GG back, and I say rematch because this is on. Because I've decided after this game, forget Protoss, forget the imbalance race. I'm going to go straight ZVZ, Zerg versus Zerg, my home race, and I'm going to take him out. My cheese didn't work, but now it's time for vengeance. On to game two.